Wilder ran the local paper of record, the Beacon Beacon. Often be found near the fountain, too absorbed in a book to be distracted. Oh, right! Rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. The first time where your charms will change the course of. And currently, we only have one suitable charm in our. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? Rolo froze as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. bit much.
A promise Gran regretted the second it was made. The phone booth was brand new, part of Perennial Harvest's Beacon Pines Reborn initiative. It didn't see much use. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of... The fence thrummed with a gentle electric bu- Luca often asked himself what Rolla would- So that he could rule out that option. As sparks flew from the fence, the light atop that section shut up. Two bulbs remained. One more to go. The fence's buzzing gave way. kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer Building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. Now, it stood only as a reminder of things like the dormant building showed strange signs of life. There was only one way to find out. emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. Luca thought he heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. He pressed his ear against the cold metal. The sound of footsteps grew louder. The heavy steel door knocked Luca to the ground. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green... It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto... Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door. This is a story about change. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself, but change is, after all, the end? I probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy, but don't let that discourage you. We will find the ending that this story deserves. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different. This is a story about change. It was far from the sort of change, but change is, after all, the end? I probably should have. There are many paths. Most will end it. We will. From here on out, a ch Now, let's try something different.
In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. A promise Gran regretted the second it was made. The path led into a small hollow The fence. Luca off it so that he. As sparks tubal. One more to go. The fences but Every kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer Building. Long abandoned, now it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed there was only one way to find. Emitted a sun. It was actively draining some. Luca thought he, he pressed his ear against the cold. The sound of footsteps grew louder. The heavy steel door knocked Luke disoriented. He looked up to see it. It lunged toward him. He tried. Luca watched his fingernails leave. This is a story about change. It was far from the sort of change, but change is, after all, the end. I probably should. There are many paths that most will end in tragedy. But don't let that discourage me. We will find the ending that this story deserves. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit.
Solomon, current ward of and future six huffed as he brushed off. Solomon trifled a gesture toward the approaching Eris fell. As the glowing window
boy sat petrified under the weight of the bag. Rollo felt around at the large sack which burdened. He snapped off a tag from just within a small zipper opening in the bag. Rollo held the badge up to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. Lucas sat in the dark, tracking the sound of Rollo. One, two, three. He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rollo's footsteps as they... Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough. Luca carefully lifted the lid. Nothing. No sign of Rollo. No sign of the man in the yellow. Time to haul ass. Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Beacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as... Chapter 3 Finding a Friend the next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. Gran's brow furrowed. She let out a long sigh. Her A faint electronic sound floated in the air.
Luca glanced at the now silent walkie-talkie. He wasn't sure what to think. Luca glanced at the now silent. He wasn't sure what to think. A pit formed in Luca's stomach. Luca's mouth felt dry. Luca could feel his heart beating in his... volunteered at the library during he wasn't very social so he'd dedicate each making him a reliable source of very particular if you were to ask Kato something he didn't know he'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and Kato was lost in his Luca crooked his neck to see the title he gestured to the shelf Psychological phosphorescence. The bottom corner shelf was a dusty array of thicks only one binding was clean enough to read. Cellular biology and the chemistry. The entire top level of the library was devoted to comics, most of which were Hank Atomic and the myriad of any actual new edition, simply a variety of existing con- Oh, the cobs I've eaten, a salad-centric travel guide for the mild- Sally Seashore's simple succulent sun- Luca brushed off a smudge of dust, or 30 recipes so easy you'll doubt it's even- 
peek behind the, the methods and ruminations of Patrick C. Montesquieu. One of the greatest acting mind by Patrick C. Beck's family moved often, giving her little time to establish she would tell you she prefers it that way. Luca shifted his feet. Beck pulled a coin from her pocket. Luca felt a chill. Her eyes were locked on the strange. The nearby grass was coated in a fine layer of... Luca watched as Beck dipped a broken tree ran. Beck's eyes widened as flowers grew from first small buds, which quickly bloomed. Quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrink. Beck dropped the stick with a grunt of disgust. Iggy took a step towards Luca, his sneer lit by the glow. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city, but a bully from a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. Beck took a deep breath and thought.
Well, time to bust out the tickles. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tish's arm. Tears began to form in Tish's eyes as she gasped for breath between. Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish finally. Iggy's eyes darted around, a realization dawning on his face that he was. Iggy kicked at the puddle before making his. Beck shook the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. Chapter 4 The Best Policy Luca paused for a moment, catching his breath. He'd only just met Beck, and somehow he already managed to drag her into- Hopefully he could make it up to her. But- 